All right, welcome back to D&D. So, last time you had just finished up in the arena, and you met with a person at a local tavern who had wanted to hire you, uh, implied that he worked for an organization that would be able to get you into the inner city. He then gave you a mission where you had to find a blackmailer, kill said blackmailer, and retrieve the blackmail material. If you were able to do so, he would offer you a large sum that I actually do have written down. But to prevent the blackmailer from determining what you were doing, he gave you a side objective, which was to basically plant some heretical material on a priestess at the local temple because the blackmailer was actually going to the temple to collect their uh, blackmail money. He gave you a 24-hour pass into the inner city, told you that the city itself, once you're there, the pass would start counting down. He'd be able to get you another one, but it would cut into your earnings. You made your way through the inner city into the actual center where you saw a large standing army drilling. You also saw the temple as well as the council hall. So that's where we left off. What is everyone doing? I, I think the plan was Biffle and Fern do the plan thing. I think so, because there are sneaky ones, and the rest of us are heavy armor clankers. Yep. And then we go do the research, I guess. Because yeah, we also want to find that ledger of slaves sold to mm -hmm. um, the shaper. That jerk. Yeah. Because we're, we're in, like, quadruple intrigue here. Because yeah. we're doing all this for the slaves while working for the slavers after fighting in the arena to get the attention of the high house. This peak drow shit. This, make, this makes us triple agents. Good. Good. I'm Bondy Bond Bond, James. It's a little dark heresy here, yeah. Uh, I'm just sword van. So we want to do that. Uh, I assume we should be able to locate a library or something. Or... I don't know how they do their things here. Yeah, I think that council hall would be where those records are, yeah? Yeah, but they don't want to share these things, man. This is all, That's also going to end up being uh, stealth. Where am I supposed to be planting this, this blackmail material? No, uh, this 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 heretical material. This is a, this is like a double blackmail cross here or something, right? Um, the heretical stuff is at some kind of church, religious like thing. Yeah, yeah the temple so, is so, the so dead. I can't get a twofer. Yeah, that's the word I was thinking. Can't get a twofer and plant the documents and steal the ledger at the same time. <laughs> yep. Maybe Fern and Fiffle can each do one half of that at the same time. Fern, you more in a planting evidence or a stealing evidence sort of a mood? Oh, Lena, you were muted. Um, I could plant it, I suppose. Works for me. I love stealing. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do, buddy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you do the stealing. I think. Uh, I think. Graham and Otto, they're like, as long as Piffle just steals the, 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 what we need, he can steal everything he wants on the way out, too. At this point, Graham has settled for, if I can point him at the right things, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> as long as the, the right thing gets done. Because he, he, the party is the tiger by the tail. He's doing his best to hold on here. All right, so let's go with that. What could possibly go wrong? Freaking narrator right. from Darkest Dungeon shows up. Heading to the temple. Okay. Yeah. Fern is heading to the temple. All right. Well, you've seen the temple from the outside. It is a large domed structure. It is made out of a dark, like, jet black stone. And as you approach, definitely can see that it's 
covered with iconography of spiders, a spider webs. Uh, you see a number of statues that are spider related, uh, either giant spiders themselves or what looks to be a cross between a drow and a spider all out in front. Gross. Let's see here. And, ah, here we are. So we're allowed to just like go into the temple? Well, the area is almost entirely drow um, as you approach the temple and get to the double doors that are the entrance. They are open. Uh, you do see the metal spike tips of a portcullis at the uh, open. Um, there are a number of guards flanking the entrance. Nobody makes a move to stop you, however. And on a character reminder, um, the drops are happening after they close it and everybody gets pushed out. So we're going to have to, if we go in on like a tour, you're going to have to slip away and not get missed. Right. To be in there after they close the doors. And where were we supposed to be planting this? For a specific person? There was a for... drow priestess they gave us. Oh, okay. There's a... Yeah, the... Blackmail, or the uh, heresy material, uh, you were told to plant on her person or in her room. It does have a name written on it. Um, it's in Undercommon, however. I can't read it. I'm... Kaido, who is funny enough joined you, despite Rami not being here, <laughs> uh, reads the name for you. Let's see here. Up at that, Kaido. Ah. He can't speak. Yeah, reads the name. Uh, let's see here. Nizana. Okay. Here's the next question. Do you guys actually speak the languages to be able to see nameplates on doors? Nope. I guess I could like match it to what's on the the stuff I have. <laughs> the plant. That's true. People's gonna end up finding an official looking building and stealing an official looking document. That's God. Unless somebody has more specific <laughs> I do have that book that can help translate if one of you needs it. Oh, we have those fancy maps and stuff. While we have time to refer to things, let's like look at the maps and the travel dictionary. Paste the and, uh, area around it and all match that. Match some things up and be like, ah, yes, this building. That way at least I steal documents from the right place. And the direct inner city where you are. Uh, the map denotes three separate locations. Uh, shows the temple of Tuazith. It shows the council hall. And it shows the mustering field and barracks. Wow. So we went by the mustering field so we can tell which direction we came in from and orient ourselves from there towards the temple, yeah? Well, we're yep. outside the temple now. Yep. But that gives us a heading for which way we want to go. Or which way we don't want to go, because we stand out like a sore thumb, and I'm sure if something goes missing and people get caught, they'll try to co go back the way we came in from, because people will know about it. Well, what would you all like to do? I guess we'll go into the temple. Okay. Please. I guess. Sounds like a good plan. Okay. Well, entering into the temple, uh, the it's a long, straight hallway. When you first enter in, uh, you see a number of people in robes, fine clothing. Almost all of them are drow. Uh, some people are accompanied with orcs uh, or hobgoblins. Uh, look to be more like bodyguards but as you travel down this long straight tunnel it's the jet black stone uh, lit up by these dim globes and you can see along the walls and the floor and the ceiling um, inlaid silver 
uh, just kind of wraps around it, forming a kind of spider web decoration. Hmm. It travels down a good 30, 40 feet uh, before it ends at a hall that splits in two separate directions. <clears throat> Are there any signs or anything along the hallway? You don't see any signs. The people traveling down the hall split both left and right uh, once they reach the uh, the T intersection. Did I go inside alone, or did it, or is everybody coming in together? Oh no, this is a stealth operation. Okay, we're stealthy now. Okay, um, I'll go down the right hallway. Okay, the right hall twists. Ends at a uh, little tunnel there that turns to the left. Yeah. Go down the left. All right. Mm -hmm. And it brings you into a large circular room. Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. You ascend up a staircase. And you see a large open room there is a, it's a kind of oval shape spider statues decorate the uh, the wall itself um you see a number of them probably at least a good 20 or so all along there are candles that are being lit uh you see a number of drow women wearing very plain uh kind of robes wearing just these kind of plain leather sandals uh just doing chores either cleaning or lighting candles uh you see in the middle of the room itself a large glass case filled with spiders of uh, various sizes small tiny spiders <laughs> up to spiders as large as someone's hand all right okay stay stay away from the spiders uh is it, are there like any other Entrances or ex exits to this yep. oval room? Out of this oval room, you see a few different hallways um, leading out. There are signs on these hallways, uh, but unless you can speak under common, you can't really make them out. Um, the... I'm assuming they're the priestess ladies that were doing the chores and things. Does it look like they're coming... Are going through any of those yep, hallways some of them. in particular? Uh, they seem to be entering and exiting the numerous different hallways. Just all of them. Okay. Yep. Um, you also see some other drow women wearing much finer robes um, and instead of sandals wearing boots um, that seem to be observing these more plainly dressed drow women. Okay. <clears throat> Are any of those coming at or going from yep. a particular hall? Uh, they all seem to be just following various groups of them, so you see them entering and exiting numerous of all, like, basically all the halls. All of them. Cool. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll go down one of the halls. One of the more finely dressed drow women stops you and speaks to you in elvish may i help you oh hi i was just looking for the bathroom <laughs> hmm yes it would be down that hallway oh, and she points you, you. across the room i must say i don't normally see one such as yourself here to give praise to azith are you a recent convert? Uh, I'm kind of checking it out at the moment, you know. I see. Seeing how it is. You're and do you have any? Curious. And you have any offerings to give to the temple of Azith? Um, what, what kind of offerings are acceptable? Well, we accept gold. We have many different costs we have to cover. I assume a tithe would be acceptable. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Let me head to the restroom real quick, and then I, I will come back and do that. Of course. Thank you. All right. I'll head down that hall. In real life, it's like follow that rabbit. <laughs> follow the white rabbit. As you head down the next hallway that the priest has pointed you to, uh, you see a number of visitors uh, exiting and exiting the hall, um, and it does lead to what appears to be restrooms. Uh, they look to be some sort of a, you know, kind of, well, not really an outhouse, but in that style, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a basin for people to wash at. Uh, so it Anything? looks like there's some measure of plumbing. Nothing else is down this hallway, just the restrooms? Um, you see a couple of what appears to be storerooms. Um, you see some small offices. And you just see a room uh, peeking in as the door opens that uh, looks to be a number of beds, uh, bunk beds, where the various priestesses, you see a couple of them sleeping, a few of them getting up, a few of them going to bed, um, as well as cabinets and chests. Okay. There is another door that looks to be a staircase heading downwards. That is, that's interesting, but I don't know about that one. Um... Hmm. Storerooms might be a good place to hide until they close. Okay. For the night. Um. <clears throat> I suppose um, I'll try to hide in one of those for um, the time being. Okay. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. You uh, go into the storeroom, close the door. About 10 minutes pass, and the door opens up. Uh, you see one of the drow women dressed in the plain robes uh, grab a sheet from the room, pulling it out and looking down to see you. Hello? Vanaf. Hi. She switches over to Elvin. What are you doing here? Uh, I've got lost. In a store closet? Yes, I know. I'm sorry. Make a deception roll, please. <laughs> for real. You're quite Small. Why don't you leave this closet? What are you even doing here, exactly? Uh, well, I heard the bathrooms were down here, and I was looking for them. This is not a bathroom. I don't know yeah, where I, you're I, from, I... but... It's too late. <laughs> One does not relieve themselves in a closet. I, d I didn't yet, okay? I just came in here, I saw that it wasn't, and I was about to leave, okay? Let me escort you to one of the restrooms. Yes, thank, thank, thank you. She rather that. roughly grabs your arm <laughs> and pulls you towards the restrooms. Kind of shoves you in. There you are. Just choose an open stall. I'll be waiting here when you leave. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. The door to the restrooms close. A few people inside kind of turn to look to see what the commotion was, but then go back to washing their hands. You think the slaves are the plumbing too? <laughs> Probably best not to think about it. This is the beginning of Fern's uh, villain arc. 
Um, you're a small rabbit, and you escape from the bathroom. I don't, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know. think there are any windows or anything in here. What if you never leave the bathroom? I can't just say that. She'll probably come in here after me. Oh, yeah. Duck work? There's always duck work. Except when there's not. I hate when there's not. <laughs> so it's a bit of a bummer, if I'm honest. All right. Uh, Fern will use the restroom and then leave and thank the Shao, uh priest, priestess again. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Try not to get lost again. I, I will try, I promise. Very good. The drow priestess goes back to the closet and begins to pull out the linens again. Okay. Uh, Fern will go back into the restroom and hide in a stall for a bit. <laughs> Occupied. <laughs> Okay, give me another stealth roll, please. Okay. All right. A uh, few people come and go. You hear a couple of bangs on the stall door. But ultimately... I put an out of order sign on the side. <laughs> uh, you'd have to get the sign and then write out of order on it. Oh, I don't have that. <laughs> I'll just hide inside. And under common. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Fern hides within the stall. Uh, nobody enters in. Nobody really takes a look. What's the rest of the party doing? I don't know, honestly. Um, I guess we can look for the Hall of Records. Okay. Yeah. How would you like to uh, look for it? records? I'm looking for the slave manifest sold to the shaper. Unless you're, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, didn't we meet somebody who was sold to the shaper? That we, yes. we tried to buy a guy. So there's actually a specific name that I know that I'm looking for, right? There's a num. It's not a name. It's a number that was on his. Yeah, account. like the ledger. Oh yeah. Okay, so good. So I have just want to know what I'm looking for, so that helps make this not completely ridiculous. <laughs> I'm assuming we have that to work with, so that it helps a little bit. Let's yeah, let's find the Hall of Records in case of John. Okay. Do we know that if are the records? Is it per day or per like buyer? You're not as sure. Yes, we once again use the maps. Okay. Yeah. Well, the maps show within the area you're in the temple to Azith, the mustering hall and uh, mustering fields and barracks, and the council hall. Okay, so uh, I believe head toward the council hall. Okay. Uh, approaching the council hall, uh, you can see it's made of the same kind of jet black stone that the temple of Azith is made out of. A large staircase leads up to the actual entrance, which is these black steel doors. Uh, once again, have a portcullis. Um, columns line the top. The building itself looks like it was originally a fortress and has been renovated to be more accessible. A number of guards in that kind of dark armor wearing the symbol of the city itself kind of line the entrance as you approach they cross their spears in front of you speaking in under common uh was kaido our speaker mm -hmm. Shit. with no response they swap over to elvish uh i believe 
did I speak of it? Yes, I speak of it. This is the council hall. Do we have business here? I'll translate that to Graham for him. I don't know if Graham speaks Elvish. How would uh, how would we make a formal request to access some records? The uh, yeah, I'll I'll translate whatever you want. Just consider an auto translation. Auto translate. <laughs> <laughs> you like my pun? The archives and hall of records are forbidden to outsiders suppose we were acting on uh, insider business mm -hmm. and what council member do you represent suppose I couldn't say then I cannot grant you access to the Hall of Records very well I guess we uh start to look as if kicking rocks and then see if the folk can peel off and sneak in behind them. And so, yeah, so I'll just say, okay, that's 100% understandable. And, uh, have a nice day. Yeah. I'll thank them and, uh, have a what nice day. And, you need to sneak in and steal. uh, yeah, we're, uh, we went up to the door. I asked, how do you get permission? They said, uh, you have to be an insider. You, no outsiders allowed. Said, what if I'm working for one who doesn't wish to be revealed? They said, tough shit. Cool, cool. So, my thought the was, back door. we slink off, and then, yeah, Fiffle breaks away from the group as we're leaving. Okay. Fiffle? Yeah, let's you... slink far enough away, and then I will, uh, slink back. Okay. Give me a stealth roll. Anytime now. All right, still Fiffle, you're quite stealthy. Uh, you're able to make your way as a group of people are entering into the building. Uh, you're able to slip among them and are able to enter into the actual council hall itself. Uh, while this is going on, you see a number of them give up their weapons to a guard on the inside of the building itself. Okay, okay. Where do I find myself once I'm uh, inside here? Uh, you find yourself in a large open lobby. Um, you see a number of mostly drow dressed in very fine clothing. Uh, some of them not many, but a few of them are wearing armor and are bearing weapons. But the majority of the drow are just wearing very well fine crafted clothing and are unarmed. Uh, you do also see a large number of the guards in the dark armor with their spears, shields, and swords who bear the uh, symbol of the city itself. From this central hall you're in, there are a number of hallways leading in different directions, left, right. Uh, you see a staircase heading up, and yeah. It's... Anything going down? Make a perception check. Everybody keeps the juicy records in the basement. I know this. Adventuring 101? I feel that's cool. You don't see anything heading down. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe because, so, so Piffle does a quick bit of reasoning using his vast intelligence and reasons that, uh, since this is the underdark and we're deep underground, everything's probably backwards here. So instead of keeping the good stuff in the basement, probably upstairs. Piffle makes his way towards the uh, stairway heading upwards. Okay. As you make your way heading upwards... You find yourself in a kind of twisting, turning hallway. Um, eventually, it leads into a large chamber. Uh, there are a number of seats kind of in a circle around. Uh, there is a single small staircase, probably 
able to really be used by one or two people heading up to a center um, kind of podium. Um, you don't really see anybody in there currently. Uh, just a couple of drow who really don't notice you as they are talking among themselves. Hmm. Looking for more filing cabinets than the ritual chamber. Uh, all right. And this does this seem to be the only thing up here? Appears to be the only thing. All right. I will uh, go back down and uh, I guess just pick a hallway. Okay. To explore. The one on the left. All right. You pick the one on the left. Uh, traveling down the hallway, you see a number of what appears to be offices. Uh, there are a group of drow that are just scribing notes, filing away like paper. Um, you see other drow kind of patrolling the building in the dark armor. Do I see anybody like um, ferrying, you know, currying files around? Like make any kind a, of clerks? Yeah, make a perception check. Looking for clerks. Filing clerks. <sighs> you see a few of them here or there. They are being given a number of these. Basically, they're big binders, big leather binders stuffed with sheets of vellum uh, being locked in the chests, handed over, and lugged around. Most of the uh, drow who are kind of lugging these around are dressed in these ink-stained robes, uh, kind of haggard look. Don't look like they've gotten a lot of sleep. Yeah, I want to follow one of these guys They're, for they're on the, the project. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I'm going to find one of these haggard looking drow and follow him sneakily. Okay. Uh, give me another stealth roll, please. Okay. Okay. This drow walks down a staircase. Like, you find him going down a hallway that kind of twists and turns, follows this uh, kind of circular staircase down into probably a good 20, 30 feet it goes down. Um, you find yourself in a long, straight hallway that leads to a, look, it's a kind of circular-looking door. Okay. The drow approaches the door, kind of see him slot in something into the door, oh. whispers. You hear him whisper something. You can't make out what he says. Uh, oh. He turns, and the door opens up. Uh, the trowel walks inside, and the door shuts behind him. Can I follow him inside? Uh, my nimble, sneaky ways. If you would like to, you Nobody can... Nobody ever notices the halfling hiding under the robes. Come on. Uh, if you would like to, you can make uh, a... To be an acrobatics to try and jump through the doorway before it shuts close. Okay. Roll to Tom and Jerry. So shall it be. Aha! You jump through, and you are able to walk. As you're approaching, you're able to like jump, get through the door, land on the other side, and uh, you kind of feel a swell of magic Ooh. from beneath you. Crap. And you realize you have landed on a glyph. Yeah. A glyph, you say? And in an instant, it kind of snaps shut around you. Well, shit. Oh. And you find yourself locked in a cube of what appears to be some magical force. Uh, yeah. 
Pethel's eyes dart side to side in panic. As he struggles and tries to free himself from the magical cube of force. The cage is not preventing you from leaving. It's preventing you from leaving. You cannot shake through. Uh, the bars are very thin um, to the point where you're not... You could kind of feel them when you run your hand along it, but you could not f slip your fingers through. Say. I don't know anything about magic. Yeah, this isn't great. Um... And uh, so I, um, I'm stuck here. I can't move. Uh, a number of drow see this cage shut and are beginning to approach. Okay, okay. Uh, I kind of think I got nothing here. I stepped on a trap. I'm trapped. Am I, I'm I'm trapped on all sides, right? I can't go up or down or side. It to is side. a it's a cube, of uh, ten feet to a side, but mm -hmm. have you got any doodads or thingums that do things? Things that do stuff. Um... Actually, I have a variety of random shit that I've never removed from my inventory. But let's see here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not looking good here for me. A number of I, I could I could get real high about it. <laughs> the drow approach. See you. Uh, and kind of start shouting in panic. Uh, a few of them pull a, sh like, uh, a cord, like a thick rope, and you can't hear an alarm begin to like ring throughout the building. A number of the darkly armored drow approach. The door opens. Uh... More of the darkly armored guards in uh, come in. Pibble <laughs> smiles charmingly and says, "Oh, thank God!" <laughs> they take out a I number of for the bathroom and been trapped here for weeks. <laughs> they take out a number of iron uh, metal bands. Uh, the cage drops, and they go to grab you. Do you resist? Uh, has the magic thing shut off yet? The cage has uh, has shut. And it is stopped working as they go to um, as they go to take these like metal bands to uh, kind of put them on your arms and legs. So in between being restrained by the cage and being restrained by metal armbands and leg shackles, um. Piffle attempts to slip from their grasp and sneak out the door. Uh, the door is closed. It had opened up, but it had closed um, as they went to arrest you. Piffle attempts to slip from their grasp and lead them on a wild goose chase around this room. Okay. Uh, give me an acrobatics to attempt to slip from their grasp. And I am going to have them make their own acrobatics. Yeah. Unfortunately, Fiffle, they are much better. Uh, maybe not. Maybe you're actually very, like, you're very dexterous, but they are lightning quick in their maneuvers, and they are able to grab and quickly just clap you in chains um, along your wrists, your ankles. Uh, they put a iron collar around your throat. Um, a bunch of them just pick you up by legs and arms. The door opens up and they lead you out of the door. 
Piffle loudly proclaims his innocence to a wide variety of crimes that you've never heard of before. One of them strikes you in the head with the blunt end of his uh, his spear. Fade to black. Okay. Who's up for a rescue mission? Well, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, I have bad news for you. I think I see the beginnings of plan B. <laughs> so... Hypothetically, if you get sold into slavery, <laughs> we could probably reason you would be sold to the Shaper, and we could track him through you. He's a major buyer, I guess. I, for the record, that's not my goal here. <laughs> if all else fails, and there is a way to we should fail <laughs> forwards out of this. Well, the rest of the party, where are you? Where are you? I know Fern is hiding in a stall in the bathroom. Uh, I guess trying to inconspicuously loiter nearish to the council hall. Okay. I mean, there's small groups here or there um, discussing things, talking. Uh, you would eventually hear from the council hall a alarm ring out, uh, which attracts the attention of a number of people. Okay. The alarm doesn't last for more than a couple minutes before shutting off. Look over at Otto. Well, I uh, I just got back for this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hope everything's okay with the so, fire truck situation. So, <laughs> my face is actually like really. What the fuck is going on here? Um, I don't know what we could do for in this case. We just can't break in there. Yeah. We're going to have to see if we can lag behind, keep an eye on them, and see where they bring. Is... Like, maybe they'll have a jail. Yeah, is there a... Are there people watching as the alarm, when the alarm goes off? Uh, a number of the people outside have turned to the building once the alarm goes off. Uh, some of them reach to weapons, but nothing seems to happen, so they lower their guard again. What, uh, are they, like, do they march Fiffle out of the building, or what's... You do not see Fitchell, uh, Fiffle get marched out of the building. Hmm, Okay. So they got internal storage. Fuck. Well, everyone's looking at the building for that like that moment. Is there does it look like there would be any feasible alternative entrance? Um you could attempt to go around and take a look. You could make an investigation to see. Uh, yeah. Um, do you want to roll that and I'll assist? Yeah, I can do that. Come on, let me roll it. All right. Oh. Taking a, uh, I, I'm waiting on the other one to come through. Oh, okay. Um, hello. Yeah, it's it's going real pokey today. All right. Well, we'll go with that. Uh. Yeah, we'll go with the nineteen. Okay. <laughs> Looking around the exterior of the building, you don't see any ground floor entrances. Um, it does look like, from your initial observation, this building was at one point a fortress, uh, and had only been renovated to its current form within the past you're not really sure how long but it looks like it was meant to be locked down relatively tight you do notice that there are a number of crossbow wielding drow up on the upper floor and this uh, the roof itself of this building you suspect that there is probably a entrance and exit for them that would be on the roof itself the roof does go up a good 60 feet, however, before it gets to where they are. 
Uh, we might have to try to climb it. How identifiable are the guards? Like, is are they like in full gear? Like, to be able to tell? Yep, if, they if are all decked out in fine metal armor. Um, the guards on the roof you saw are wielding the like, looks like big heavy crossbows. Uh, they have sh the crossbow users themselves don't appear to have shields, but they are dressed in the exact same way as the guards on the bottom who are wearing spears and shields, and they all also have swords at their side. Hmm. <laughs> but you can very easily tell they're drow, right? They all appear to be drow. So we can't do the snatch a uniform thing? No, that, that's exactly what, you know exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, two of us could sub subdue a couple of them real quick, and then... We, uh... I think we're gonna have to try to... How how much overlap is there in their fields of view if we did try to climb up onto the ceiling? Like, are they posted such that they'd be able to see that immediately? Uh, the... The, the roof itself, um, especially now that the alarm has triggered, these drow look like they all are kind of surrounding the area giving their best attempt at a 360 degree field of view that they can see uh, from your observation they appear to be in groups of four that are each uh, simultaneously providing cover for each other as well as for other groups of four so no shot at that then you know if uh, Kaido was actually here we had more options with the flying and stuff. Hmm. Well, while you're thinking about this, we're going to run back to Fiffle real quick. Fiffle! Yes? You are brought into a different underground section of the building. Uh, traveling deeper underground into a area with iron bars and a number of gates that are shut behind you guards at every intersection and every gate uh, you are dragged into a room where you are chained down to a iron chair with a kind of metal studs in the seat in the back uh, your leather straps keep your head still I've been to a chair in a tiny shack told me not to work because so I me back basically is that what you're saying? yeah I mean with the exception that you also see a table at uh, the side of the room itself. And on the table, you see a number of instruments, uh, small knives and daggers, uh, pincers, uh, something that looks like it's, uh, it's like a little fire yeah, poker that's in a... Paper to my tender nip, I'll be okay. It's being held in a piece of, uh, it's like a charcoal burner. Actually, that sounds pretty bad. Inside, see four guards. A number of, while well, they stand inside, a drow enters in. He is not wearing the armor that the guards are wearing. Uh, he has a kind of metal necklace around that has some symbol on it. You're not really sure what it specifically says but it does have a uh, spider kind of stamped onto it ah. he runs through a number of different languages uh, it starts with under common swatches over to elvish mm -hmm, mm -hmm. swaps over to taking a look at you gnomish before switching over to halfling uh you figured it out i am indeed a halfling and not a gnome So, I'm innocent, I swear. With the minor exception of being found in the archive. But I didn't do it. <laughs> Who do you work for? What? I don't work for anyone. I'd recommend answering my questions truthfully. 
I did answer your question. Truthfully. I don't work for anyone. Hmm, interesting. Maybe Grat Sauce is his own man. Fascinating. The symbol around your neck pinned to it there, the one similar to mine. Six blades crossed among each other. <laughs> what, this? Yes. I got this off a dead guy. I thought it looked cool. Uh, Fifth make a deception check. With pleasure. <laughs> uh... Nice. Hilarious. Although I can tell you're lying. Fuck. <laughs> I like. I like. The... What do you mean I'm lying? I've never told a lie in my life. <laughs> I'm known for my innocence. Mickey yes. the innocent. That's what they call me. Hmm. Yes. So we've also discovered a number of weapons upon you when you're not allowed to bear weapons in the council hall itself. Oh well, I mean those are just for self-defense. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to ask you again, who are you working for? Um, I'm an independent contractor. That one's technically true, but you had a reason <laughs> to be in the Archive Hall, did you not? Uh, by reason, what exactly do you mean? Why are you here? Oh, um, your building looked really interesting. I am a keen observer of architecture. Mm-hmm. He looks you in the and eye. Having seen the beautiful palisades and buttressments and um, 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 ionic columns... On the outside, I uh, I had to tour the inside of the building to satisfy my curiosity about architecture. Yes. I suggest you tell me the truth. And, Fiffle, can you give me a wisdom save, please? I have literally never told a lie. <laughs> what are you talking about? I suggest you tell me exactly what you're doing here. Wisdom save. Nice. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Dice. The one that probably matters the <laughs> least because you'll just do it again. Oh, wait, you can't do it, me. You're dice. immune for like 24 hours, right? Uh, yeah, you are. Actually, I don't know if you. It doesn't actually mention it, funny enough. Hmm. But, I don't remember, but. Hmm. Stronger will than I thought. Very well. I don't have to make this easy. I'm a very busy man. So instead, I will do this a slightly more blunt way. He takes a uh, small hammer from the table and he brings it over. An, an involuntary squeak. <laughs> and he places the hammer's head on your hand. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Please, which of your hands shall I break? The left or the right? Um, is this a trick question? Would you like me to break both? No. Crap. Um, this is a trick question, isn't it? Piffle launches into his entire life story, beginning from his birth. <laughs> Very. The drought. In detail, day by day. Places the. Completely true. Hmm. Fascinating. Why don't you skip towards the end? Let me see the past few days. What would you say? But, but if you don't have the background, you won't understand. So, the right oh, hand, no. then. Yes, I think we'll break... 
actually. He p- picks up a uh, pair of, uh, looks like gardening shears. Hmm. And he takes your le- uh, right pinky and he kind of puts them between. Once again. Um, that would be a good time for a rescue, guys. <laughs> Time reaccelerates. So we're gonna head back to the rest um, of the party okay, while so this need, is going. Yeah. So you can either cut away or I'm gonna need to make some some dice. Cut away work. or cut away. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Actually, we're gonna cut over to Fern. Yeah. There you go. Fern, you're in the restroom <laughs> hiding out. Yes. Eventually, you have hear the door open, and you hear a couple of priestesses talking among themselves in Elvish. Someone's been using that restroom for a long time. Some of the people are com- complaining. Go see if the door just sh- stuffed shut. And you see, you hear some footsteps. You look down at the door. It has a opening underneath uh you can see a pair of sandaled feet walk up and kind of shove on the door the lock rattles mm-hmm. just gonna stay quiet <laughs> you see a drow priestess's head kind of peek up and look inside that's rude <laughs> uh but by kind of crouching into the corner and pressing herself, she does not see you. You see her slip up, kind of like hands and knees kind of get on and inside and flick open the lock and open the door. Uh, give me another stealth roll as the door opens, please. Oh. The dice are a dick. <laughs> They're like, we're doing your prison arc now, motherfucker. <laughs> Robbie's gonna be so mad. He wanted it so bad. Well, well that's what he gets for talking a week. As the door opens up and the extra light from the room floods in, uh, the other couple drow around see you, including the drow who was saw you in the closet earlier. <laughs> I'll be right back. I have irritable bunny syndrome. <laughs> they can I just use the bathroom in peace, guys? What are you doing? That was an hour ago. I had to go again. <laughs> Two of them grab you and just start dragging you out of the room. <laughs> And they bring you into the main hall with all the spiders. They're like, say your prayers, give your tithing, and then leave. Fine. They drop you in front. Another priestess. Yeah, these people are way less suspicious than the people who caught me. <laughs> Another priestess, very well dressed. Uh, you can see that she is wearing a robe made out of silk, uh, what actually appears to be a very fine spider silk. A uh, number of jewelry. Um, her hair is tied in a bun, and among it is a silver uh, piece that kind of holds her hair in place uh, in the style of a spider. Eight small red rubies form eyes among it. Um, she approaches. Ah, please, sisters, be kind to our patrons here. Hello, young one. How may I help you? Oh, uh, hi. I was just trying to learn about Azith here. Of course. And, uh, what, what can you tell me about Azith? <laughs> well, that's... 
would you care to join me in the prayer hall? Y yes, I would. Uh, she gently takes your hand and leads you down the center hallway, uh, entering into a large open kind of cathedral space. A uh, number of pews line the buildings uh, here with a couple of rows leading to a center uh, pew. Uh, you see a very, very finely dressed priestess wearing a well-made uh, robe, also made of spider silk, you believe, um, fine jewelry. Other priestesses you see are lighting candles or have uh, lighting some incense sensors. Um, the priestess at the front is speaking in under common. You're not really able to determine what she's saying. Uh, but the priestess who uh, leads you in seats you at a uh, pew in the back and sits next to you. Says to you in Elvish, I cannot speak the full statement of uh, the sermon that the uh, prime priestess is saying, but she speaks of Azith, our patron god who protected us when we first arrived in the Underdark here thousands of years ago, after the, a great calamity upon the surface. Uh, Azith represents self-reliance, strength, stealth, and cunning, all things that were needed to survive down here. If not for her wisdom, we would have perished in our first years in the Underdark. Oh, wow. And I'm sorry, young one, what would you say your name was? Oh, my name's Fern. What's yours? I am Nizana. I knew it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not saying that, but <laughs> I knew oh, it was going to be her. <laughs> the nice one. <laughs> oh, it's nice to meet you, Nizana. Well, I imagine you're not proficient in other common. It's a difficult tongue, but I hope that by simply being able to listen, even if you can't understand, you can absorb some of the meaning of the sermon that our prime priestess is giving, and this provides you some measure of enlightenment or comfort. Yeah, I'll, I'll stay and listen. Very good. I have other duties to attend to, but please stay as long as you wish. The temple is open for the next few hours. Uh, we will be closing up at a point for our standard priestly meetings and sermons, uh, at which point all non-temple personnel will be asked to leave the building. Okay, thank you so much. You're quite welcome. As she turns and she heads out of the uh, the cathedral you're in. Okay. So, I just got back for that, but I'm out of character. Is she being recruited into a religion? Maybe. Maybe? Okay. Probably. <laughs> Fern's just like, I know how I'll survive the wild hunt. <laughs> Spider goddess! I'll hunt them. <laughs> I'll make them have to go through all this crap so they can't catch me. Also, the nice priest, this is the one that we have to uh... frame. Here's the thing, yeah, frame this occurs hairs. to me. There's nothing saying we can't do the quadruple double cross. No, I was, no okay, so here. if I'm understanding this evidence. right... Fern, in knowing Fern's character, Fern is having doubts about doing this now. Yes! <laughs> She's like, everyone was kind of rough. I mean, I mean, you don't know this, but if Otto was in your shoes, he'd be like, yeah, fuck this, I'm not doing this. <laughs> we cut back to Otto, Graham, and to an extent, Kaido, who is more kind of interested in, you notice, reading his smut. Oh yeah, he bought smut. <laughs> and doesn't really seem to be paying attention to what's going on. He's crashing into people, walking around. I didn't even know he could read. I, I, I'll tell that to Graham. So, Sorry if you guys can hear the dogs. Uh, no. A little bit, but no big deal. I mean, Winston's more vocal than uh, Kaido. Hmm? That's not even Winston. Man. <laughs> uh, 
Winston has a higher score. His score. Um, Let me relook up the common spell. So. Well, I have a spell that I can cast that will let us be understood and understand languages for an hour. An hour. It's, it's one person. I'm trying to think of ways I could actually leverage this. Because I don't see us sneaking in, I don't see us breaking in, and it sounds like there's no way we could climb in on the roof. Kaido just says, I can fly up there. Yeah, and they'll see you. Details, Graham, details. I mean, alright, we could use you as a distraction. I can already hear Rami going, fuck you guys! <laughs> fuck you guys! Be on the VOD, buddy. Um... <laughs> You could maybe make a scene, but they would almost definitely shoot at you or chase and apprehend you. I feel like Kaido would say, I'm excellent at making a scene. I am the scene. I know, buddy. Fuck. <laughs> uh. The only thing I can think is maybe... Maybe we can eavesdrop and just listen in by using tongues, but ah, fuck. You has got all conversation has all conversation always been an undercommon even what during that alarm or was there any other languages that we might have overheard? You hear primarily undercommon. Uh, a couple people speak Elvish. Um was there anything useful from the Elvish? Make, that could have uh, picked up? make an investigation as you kind of try and um, listen in. Mm -hmm. Or a perception, I think, would be a more viable in this case. Okay. Uh, da, 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 hang on. It's, it's got to roll because it's dumb. I'll click the button. Nice. So, yeah, if you're able to kind of stand among a group of drow that are talking among themselves uh you hear the conversation pretty clearly uh, you hear him talking for a sec ah you just came from inside what was going on then there it's like <laughs> apparently they caught some interloper trying to sneak into the archives <laughs> it's like ah interesting what do you think public execution I'm like no I'll probably just be sold into slavery although what kind of a good of a slave will be really it depends on if he'll talk to the inquisition <laughs> uh, he's in their hands now we'll see how many fingers he leaves with i'll be an awesome slave shut up <laughs> <laughs> what do you think all 10 <laughs> i'd say he'll be leaving with eight that seems likely. let's see if he's wise enough to tell the truth or not but either way he's definitely finding himself with a band around his neck, probably out in the old slave district. Either that, or they might just feed him to the spiders. So, so, so they're overhearing this, and they can rescue you, right? Well, overhearing, yes. Can rescue <laughs> is uh, still in the cards, or not? We're trying to figure it out right now, buddy. We are not well equipped for this task. Uh. I'll relay all of this to Graham. Can we look around for anybody? Maybe a while Pebble tried to defend his fruit cocktail. <laughs> uh, what was that, Matt? Can we like keep our eyes peeled to see if we find anybody like taking a bribe? So maybe somebody we could buy our way in through. Make uh, an investigation roll. I'll help you. Thank you. Sorry, advantage. Investigate. Now let's see how many. Oh, no, that was fast. Okay, 20... Graham, 
you see a drow man um his clothes look a little more ragged um his leather boots more worn uh ink staining his fingers and hands um he has a small leather case. Uh, you can see some quills sticking out of it and hear kind of the rattle of ink bottles. Uh, in his, tucked under his arms, um, both he has these kind of leather tubes. Um, and you see him kind of shuffling around, making his way towards the council hall. Okay. Um... Yes, I will have to cast tongues on one of us. I could do it twice, but then I would be out of third level spells, and I think we're gonna need third level spells. Yeah, we're gonna need a third level spell. Just do it on. Um, I'm not sure if I should negotiate. I really am at a loss. Or if you want to try, I, I don't even know how to. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this. I will like, or... cast tongues on myself. And okay. Let me just copy paste the things I didn't put it in. So, yes, you can... Okay. So, when I talk, um, they'll understand, as long as they know a language. And I can understand any spoken language. Okay. Uh, you cast Tongues Upon Yourself. Suddenly, all the conversations that were just uh, absolutely foreign to you snap into perfect common within your head. Okay. Um... Before I commit to this plan, am I hearing anything that kind of corroborates going after this dude? Um, or any anything else worth listening into before I commit? You just hear a few people talking about like the intruder that had gotten captured. Uh, people taking bets on whether he'll be enslaved or executed. A couple people betting on whether he'll be leaving uh, with ten fingers or less. Yeah, um, nobody's talking about ways in or out or any pacing the joint shit like that. A couple people are wondering how he was able to sneak in past the guards. Suspect he was probably pretty uh, well-versed in his craft up until the end. But nobody's mentioning any uh, anything beyond the building itself being um, locked down, looking for other intruders. Yes. Um, I will approach this guy and uh, clear my throat. Hmm. Yes, how can I help you? Well, maybe we could help each other. You uh, interested in making a little extra money? Entirely possible. What do you have in mind? So, let's say there's an alarm going on in there and we know who did it. Mm -hmm. Suppose we wanted to get him out optimally with his fingers. Yes. You want to know how that's done? I think I do. Hypothetically. And I will take out 25 gold to start with. Yes. He reaches out for the gold. And okay. uh, can I incite him as this is going on? Go ahead, run an insight. Time for my one. Okay, not, not the worst. Uh, he seems interested in the gold. He seems to know. Uh, seems like he's playing ball with you. Okay. Uh, Graham will give him the money. Hypothetically. Of course, if you knew somebody in there and you wish to get them out, you could claim that they're a lost slave. And then you simply can pay whatever fee they off set out for you. Which would be the way to, I would say, to get your property back from them. Because then it falls not to the slave itself, but to you to take responsibility. Okay. What would that look like? Could be many things. Could be a fine. 
could be community service. So, as an outsider, what would that le look like most likely? <sighs> an outsider. Well, a fine, definitely. Uh... You would also be expected to, depending on your capabilities, some service to the city for your carelessness, uh, which could be many different things. Um, you, you particularly look well versed in the art of violence, so I imagine that might involve that. Uh, could be jail time, could be a public flogging could be all sorts of things uh, if you throw yourself at the mercy of the court you're unlikely to be jailed how do I make sure if I go this way uh, he doesn't lose any fingers between now and then suggest you work quickly because sounds like He's in the hands of the Inquisitors. All right, what do you reckon? Just go up to the front guard? Let him know yes. somebody's just collecting? Mm -hmm. That's my recommendation. Also recommend... Uh, well, I suppose this is my turn to ask, why are you so interested in this uh, person inside? I would just cut my losses and go myself. No. We're uh, trying to get in with the uh, the locals, and uh... well, <laughs> you know the it's funny. I'm a I'm a local, and uh, typically when uh, an outsider breaks into the council hall for whatever means, understandable, but not exactly the best for getting friends. <laughs> yep, but uh. You know how business operates around here. Yes. I mean, if you're... What do you... Would... Forgive my intrusion, but perhaps we could help another. What are you specifically interested in? Inside. Uh, so I couldn't help but notice your shift in what looks like a lot of official ledgers. These tubes are empty. I've already delivered their messages, but yes, I am a archivist here. Suppose somebody's very interested in our uh, recent bulk buyer. Takes him a moment, but his eyes light up. Yes, that's an interesting one. A lot of people are interested in that information, and it could be recovered for a correct amount of money. I will give him another 25, and should I make another insight check, or does this all still seem to be about the same keel? Uh, I can make another one if you'd like. All right. Please, no bully. Okay, it's better. He looks at the money, doesn't seem... No, friend, you don't understand the entire council this is not just some files that i would need to go and just pull out this is something where i actually have to go in and ensure that the correct palms are greased uh, the entire council voted on this a not quite even split but enough for and against making this somewhat of a contentious measure the Records themselves are quite sealed. Mm. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I don't understand any of this, but uh, I don't know if I can out of character. If you <laughs> ask him how much, yeah. What I, I guess. What I'm trying to say is you need to plant more of these golden seeds if you want the flowers to grow. All right. Time to go broke again. Uh, I will give him 75 gold. That's more reasonable. 
Give me a few days. This isn't something that can be easily or quickly done. I'm going to need to run through some red tape, although you've made it worth my while. So we have a deal. Uh, my name is Moral Nakwar. I will be able to get you these. Where are you going to meet me once I'm finished? How about around here around the same time? But well, no, shit. Um, you have a twenty-four hour pass. Yeah. How about outside of the arena? Oh, uh, I don't normally go to the arena, but uh, Grant, make a persuasion check. Eh. I I don't typically find myself going to the arena. It's a bit more course, if you ask me, uh, to head there in person. I'd much prefer to simply watch from the inner city here. Fair enough. Any uh, other middle grounds, or would you rather it be here? I would prefer the inner city. I haven't traveled to the outer city for quite some time. Uh, unless you could make it worth my while, of course. Alright, inner city it is. Very good. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Well, I'm part of one of the minor houses. A uh, jots down the name. Uh, running your fingers over it, you are able to read his uh, family name. And, or the uh, the name of the house he works for. I'll meet you in their district in the inner city. Okay. Uh, just head to... Yes, yeah, head to the local tavern there. I'll meet you there. We can watch an arena match. Um, give me two days' time, and I'll have what you need. You've made it worth my while, so I'll make it worth yours. Well, thank you kindly. You're quite welcome. He takes the money and just kind of secrets it away very quickly, and then makes a beeline into the uh, the building itself. The guards let him through. Okay. Um, so, good news is we got that going for us. The bad news is now we got to go up to them too and uh, try to collect our halfling as intact as possible. Wow. Um, We're going to go to Fiffle. Find you. We'll head over to Fiffle. Fiffle, you find yourself, your pinky is in the shears of this drow man. He looks down to you. So, I'm going to ask you very yeah, cool, pointedly. Yeah. I'm going to ask you very, very pointedly. Who are you? Who are you working for? And what are you doing here? Piffle thinks about this really hard. He looks at his finger. Oh, man. What kind of halfling is Piffle, really? Um, and only the dice can answer that question. Oh, boy. The Inquisitor looks to you, looks in your eyes. You are the kind of halfling who works Would for you? himself and will do anything to improve his lot in life. And losing Which? a finger for your associates is not in your best interest. Huh? The Inquisitor rolled his own insight against you, Fiffle, and rolled a 20. Oh, damn. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, that's just like his interpretation man, of uh, the Death of the author, character. Man. Wait, that's so bad. Which, <laughs> which major character trait? Uh, Going with wisdom for this. Okay. I'm gonna make a flat wisdom. I'm gonna roll a 13. And I believe I decided if I roll less than a 10. Um. All right. 
Piffle is going to tell a version of the truth. Okay, what are you telling this man? I'm Mickey Rat Sauce, and sometimes I do jobs for those crossblades. Who you mm-hmm. identified from my uh, medallion? Yes, we were able to identify the iconography of your medallion. It does match a surface group known as the Crossblades. Mickey Rat Sauce sounds to me like a well, an identity you made up. Now, keep in mind that Piffle has been using the ultimate identity of Mickey Rat Sauce for years. Yeah. Like, there are probably records of Mickey Rat Sauce elsewhere. Just say. I would care. Just say. Yeah. Now, um, I'm sticking with the Mickey Rat Sauce ident- identity. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to say that Piffle instinctively falls into the character and personality of Mickey Rat Sauce in certain situations and can't really help it. <laughs> okay. All right. I know is that that rat is sauced. <laughs> the shears along your pinky release a small amount. You can still feel the pressure of the blade on it, but not as bad. Okay, so um, now the crossblades being well-known do-gooders, sometimes they have a need, you know, to keep their reputation uh shiny while still accomplishing things that uh, might tarnish it now um a very bad uh and uh you know nefarious uh enemy of the crossblades um has been at work here in the underdark and uh i believe they are trying to gather evidence um of the uh location and intent of this uh nefarious group Now, they are believed to have come through this town and perhaps done business here. So uh, I, Mickey Ratsauce, was dispatched to uh, peruse the official records and uh, perhaps um, make note of any information, you know, about that, you see. Mm -hmm. And what group is this you're looking into that's acting against your crossblades? Piffle racks his mind. Um, out of character. What was the name of the group? Uh, there's the Penny Rats and who, who was the other? Uh, the Iron, Iron Masters? Masters? Yeah. Piffle goes uh, and throws the Iron Masters under the bus here. Mm-hmm. Fuck yes. Yeah. Except I can tell you're lying. Damn it. But. And he presses. But I'm not lying. He presses the blade of the shears. You can feel them cutting into your pinky. Oh, God, I'm telling you the truth, man. You may have had some issues with these Iron Masters, but they're not the ones in the Underdark. Who are you investigating among us in the Underdark? Uh, the slavery. Give some pause for a moment. This quite a bit of that here you're going to need to <laughs> really give me some details he, he here know him. he works for another noble <laughs> um out of character i guess the slave they was bought out from us hmm. that's all i can think of so no, yeah, that, that is a thing that happened, and it is true. So, um, yeah, so the uh, crossblades were trying to buy this particular slave. Uh, don't ask me why. I don't know why they're trying to buy a slave. That's that's weird. But uh, for for them, not not for you. Um, I mean, for I don't know about you, but the people here. I mean, I'm sure you uh, either do or, or don't buy slaves, depending on what's considered good. So, um, but what I mean is the crossblades. We're trying to buy this guy, and somebody swooped in and bought him out from under them, and so they were trying to find out who. And, and that's why I'm here. Interesting. And what slave was this? Uh, 
Triffle racks his, his mind and, and says, uh, I think his name was Barney. Barney uh, Rubble. <laughs> Once again, I can tell you're lying. And he begins to I, put pressure on the... Say, man. Hmm. We don't really know his name, did we? You got his no, name. We got his name. And his number. I don't remember his name. Oh, we do have his number. We can go off that. Look, Piffle's trying to, to weave truth and lies into a complex stew here to throw off this guy's <laughs> magic uh, perception senses. Tell me more about your mother, Piffle. Let, <laughs> Piffle, let me t or Mickey Rat Sauce, let me tell you a little bit here. I'm able to determine any lie that you tell me from the truth. So I recommend you tell me the truth. But I haven't told you any lies. That's not true. Well, Piffle's freaking out. <laughs> you told me the Iron Masters when they are not active among the Underdark here. You just told me the slave you wish to purchase was one Look, Barney man, Rubble. It sounds like you know a lot more than I do about what's going on. <laughs> I know many things. I wish to what hear it from you. What do you think I was doing? It's, you'd probably know better than me about that. <laughs> this is your last chance, Mr. Rat Sauce. And then I'm clipping off your finger. What were you doing in the archives, and what were you after? I'm going to give you until the count of three. I think Devil loses a finger. <laughs> But before I begin my count, not necessarily group... out of like loyalty to the crossblades or anything, or or a desire to do the right thing, but because, and and I I, I might be putting myself into the character a little bit here, but I, I don't think Piffle is capable at this point of giving his adversary what he desires. <laughs> I, I, I just don't think it's in it. He, he's, he's not going to be able to tell this guy the truth. He just can't. It's not in his character. He can't do it. He's going to lose it. He's Eddie from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. He can't not. <laughs> hmm. Looks to some of the guards. That's the truth, man. Came here to find out about Barney the Slave. A real person. This one's already told me everything I need to know. You, Mr. Rat Sauce here, have been quite informative. Oh, uh, by the way, I should mention, we also searched through the entirety of your belongings. Disguise kits, all sorts of things. Document you wine. You'd like the wine. <laughs> no, thank you. Unfortunately... I just don't believe you have the wherewithal to tell me what I need to know. I don't think you have it within your little halfling skull to actually tell me the truth. Piffle, Piffle nods sagely. Right. Wherewithal. Yes. <laughs> it came back, baby. <laughs> what was the other word? Happenstance. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to get your thoughts together. I won't cut your finger off right now. However, he takes a pair of pliers and he puts it on your uh, fingernail and he just gives a <laughs> nice pull and pulls your fingernail right out of your hand. Oh, God. Piffle obviously shrieks. What was that for? Not answering my questions when I asked them originally. Oh. And he puts on another fingernail, and this one was for wasting my time. And he pulls mm. out another fingernail. Mm. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, and we can easily just grow those back and do it all over again. Well, anyway. Hope kind of collapses in the chair. <laughs> Y'all come back now, you hear? We'll be back in a... We'll be back in a little bit of time. I'll give you 15 minutes to think about what you want. And then I'll be back, and I will be 
taking some fingers. Oh, and I'm going to be cutting off the fingers that I pulled the nails out of just to really double up on my expertise. So please think about what you want to tell me when I return. All right, cutting over to Fern. <laughs> That would be a real good time for that rescue. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Like, you're Fiffle, you're like chained to a chair. You cannot move your arms or legs. Fiffle imagines that he has a harmonica. And that he can... <laughs> there will be no harmonicas in the Drow City. Yeah, Fern, you find yourself in this chapel having spoken to uh, the Drow Priestess. Yeah, uh, Fern will sit through the, the sermon, and then she will go and try to find, what was her name again? Uh, Niz sorry. Nizana? Nizana. Nizana. Nizana again. Okay. Uh, make a, attempt to track her down. How do you want to try and find her? Uh... I guess I would look for her in the main hall first. Uh, make a perception check. Here. Make a perception check. There's perception. Um, looking around, you see many drow priestesses. Um, none that are her or even dressed as fine as her. Hmm. Uh, I'll ask someone if they've seen her. Okay. Uh, there are the drought priestesses around, the ones who are just in kind of like the plain linen robes, um, the ones that are better dressed who, as well as different uh, drow who don't seem to be associated with the temple itself, just seem to be giving prayers or are receiving blessings or are giving money. Um, you actually, with that 25, you do see a drow who kind of just looks around side to side and standing next to a statue he places a kind of full pouch into an opening within the statue itself and then turns and leaves that might be the blackmail thing <laughs> okay okay uh, can I go over to where I saw him do that and mm -hmm. take it out of it? <laughs> yep. Are you being stealthy or no? Yeah. Yes. Give me a stealth roll. Okay. Again. <laughs> okay. All right. Removing the pouch from this statue. Uh, it's got a nice weight to it. Uh, you can feel and hear the uh, kind of clink of coins inside. All right, I'll just put that in my like jacket or something. I don't know, whatever. I think I'm put it away, and then uh, I'll go ask one of the priestesses in the plain clothes uh, where if I could see Nizana. Um, priestess in the kind of plain. You see her just kind of on her knees scrubbing the ground with a brush and is like, Nazana, what, why do you have to speak to Nazana? Uh, I was speaking to her earlier and um, I just wanted to talk about her with her about something. She's probably in her office, but that's in a hall that's restricted to priestesses only. Oh, okay. Uh, could you get her for me? Make a persuasion check. I could use a break. Yes. One second. Thank you so much. Gets off. Off her scrubbing. Puts the brush back in the bucket. And then you see her like head down one of the hallways. Takes a few minutes. But eventually the uh, priestess you had spoken to and Nazana return. Uh, Nazana. Ah, yes. Uh, Fern, how are you? You enjoyed the sermon, I hope? Yes, I did. It was very nice. Uh, could I speak with you in private, please? Yes, of course. Uh, let's see. Come with me. 
and she leads you down a hall. Um, wish, what do you wish to speak about? Um, do you do you have any enemies by chance? I don't follow. Um. Okay. Look. You're really nice. Thank you. Uh, I, so that's a compliment, I'm assuming. Yes, I really liked you. So, but don't keep me in suspense, Fern. I feel like I, I'm trying. <laughs> I don't want to give you uh, t too many details or get myself into trouble here. Look, someone is trying to um, frame you for something. I was sitting here to plant some evidence on you, but I don't want to do that. May I see this evidence? Um. Whoops, I forgot it. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I will. Sh I will show her a piece of the evidence. Uh, you take out the leather journal. Uh, that has her name on it. And you just show her one of the pages. Mm -hmm. uh, she looks at it. Eyes widen. Yes. Uh, I'm going to need that from you. I'm going to have to immediately burn it. Oh, okay. Um, do, do you know why someone would want to do this to you? Particularly? I'm a third step priestess. Uh, I assume a fourth step probably wishes to take my position. Uh, I see, I see. Okay. Who gave uh, you this bla uh, uh, this heretical material? Honestly, I don't even remember their name. Basically a proxy who did not identify who he was working on behalf of. We just know it's one of the noble houses. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I'll just tell her it's like several different layers deep at this point. I don't really know who it came from. Mm, well, probably using a fake name, but subterfuge is something we need to deal with occasionally. I thank you for coming to me with this information. Uh, um, I, I had a second uh, thing interest, uh, that I was interested in here. Someone has been blackmailing a certain person. Do you know anything about that? Uh, well, blackmail. In the simple. I don't know exactly. <laughs> blackmail. I'll take exists. out the. I'll take out the the, the bag and tell her that where I found it and that I saw the the guy put it there. Uh, she goes to reach for the bag, hoping you'll hand it to her. I will hold on to it and show it to her. She looks. She looks at the bag. Uh, there's probably at least three hundred gold in there. Dang, that's a lot. <laughs> you know anything about that? What could be I... going on here in this temple? Blackmail within the temple itself. Uh, well, I mean, blackmail is a common occurrence in Mythograth. You don't know the person who was working for the group that he represents who's being blackmailed uh, but within the temple itself I can't imagine I mean you pulled that from a statue you said mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes I imagine it would be somebody who has access to that statue uh, possible it's someone within the temple itself or someone who has access to the temple I mean we're open to the public for the most part at least for the next couple hours in which case the temple will be closing down for our ceremonies mm -hmm. right do I remember if um if the guy told us who was being blackmailed or just that they kind of used this as a place to I think they just off? knew that this was the dead drop point okay and the identity of the either the person dropping it off or the person responsible is yeah 
I saw the person who dropped off the the money, though, right? You saw them, yep. It was you... a, it was a priest or like a random person coming in. Uh, it was a visitor. Um, they. <laughs> didn't really have any identifier they uh, wore a black cloak over their actual outfit um and looked to not uh, try and downplay like their actual like appearance nice. could i would i be able to describe him at all so um know. you could try and give a description i would say this would be a flat intelligence as you're from memory attempting to describe this man Okay, I will do that. Uh, you describe the drow man. Um, describe his, av his like approximate height, hair length. Um, you describe the clothes he was wearing. But it's a little too vague. Uh, she does not recognize the person. It's like, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll definitely keep a lookout. I mean, if we're seeing him dropping off this well payment then i imagine he'd be back eventually of course it yeah. could just be a courier that's also true anyway i figured the two might be intertwined since uh to an extent we're yes kind of doing both here we've done me quite a solid favor fern and there are people here who have been interested in removing me i've spoken of a more heterodoxical worship of azith that has been not as popular oh what does that involve uh, a more openness to outsiders such as yourself I believe the word of Azith can be appreciated by all forms, not just the drow and their allies. Oh, well, that explains a lot. <laughs> but I would be willing to assist you in your investigation if you would be willing to give me the journal there for destruction. Sounds like a good deal. I'll hand over the journal to her. Uh, she takes the journal, takes out a little tinder box, and just very quickly lights it up. And just you just watch it burn in the little tinder box. And then she just quickly, actually, I think she might even have control of flame. So it just ignites, and as it burns, she just uses her magic, and it just instantly goes out until it's just ash. Uh, uh -huh. She just dumps it in a small little trash receptacle. Um, the information we have says that the, whoever will be picking up this money from the blackmail is doing it after you guys close, by the way. Hmm. Well, it's a good thought. It could be a number of people, any of the priestesses, with the exception of the prime priestess, also she might just, if it is her, she's having somebody pick it up. Uh, we also have a number of temple visitors who are allowed access in, uh, connected to the we have a number of benefactors and allies who connect to uh, the major noble houses uh, council members or their trusted associates uh, let's see here I could theoretically anoint you uh, and bring you in as a guest of honor mm -hmm. you would need to learn some of the various teachings of azith though and i would be quite unorthodox to have a non-drow in the temple which is something i'm attempting to change so mm -hmm. it would be within expected of me although it would be quite provocative for me to do it without at least trying to get some allies on my side are you able to alter your uh, your physical form in any way mm, no i'm very short as well i could if you could disguise yourself as a drow child that would work 
Yeah, maybe that would work. Um... I don't really have a disguise kit or anything. Um... Here's maybe. one from an evidence locker that just came in from across town. <laughs> <laughs> you know somebody with a disguise kit. Uh, perhaps our, uh, there are face changers in the city. You might be able to get them to alter your identity, but you should worry. That only lasts for an hour. Okay. I could do that. Uh, could you tell me where one is that I could find? or? She kind of takes out a little scrap of paper and jots down an elvish uh, where in the inner city uh, you could expect to find somebody. A friend, they owe me a favor, but they also will charge. I suppose you could utilize some of your uh, that blackmail money in order to pay for it. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good idea. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay. Then come back before we close, which is in two hours' time. Okay. I recommend coming back, getting changed just before then, coming back. We will investigate this, and then, unfortunately, because it only lasts for an hour and will be closed until the morning, you would need mm -hmm. to hide away. I could keep you in my office. Okay, yeah, that works. But you would have probably have to slip out eventually. I guess... One place where you could hide that no one would really go down to is the uh, the spider stables down below. Sp sp what? <laughs> no. We where the uh, silk from our robes, which kind of like spreads out and shows her robe. Uh, we also oh. milk them for their poison. Uh, we oh. tame them for the spider riders. Yeah, we prepare them for our rituals. Every now and then, we do like a community birthday event for the kids turning thirteen. Yeah. They love it. <laughs> Okay, not ideal, but... Uh, Would you like some funnel it. web cake? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that was good. <laughs> that was hilarious. I love that pun. <laughs> if you if you have a pun, always give me the pun. Very well. I suppose I could stay down I mean, there. I could give you a pun earlier. Well then, uh... Good. So we have a plan in place. I will trust you'll be back and I will assist you to find this person in any way as you have done me quite a good favor here. Yes, thank you. You're quite welcome. All right, I'll be back in uh, two hours. Very good. I will be waiting for you. Uh, yes, just go when you return tell any of the priestesses to come and fetch me that you are going to be a possible priestess in training that has been dispatched by my house right okay sounds good all right Wh we which house are you with well unfortunately when we enter into the priesthood we give up our family names and our noble houses to serve only Azith. Um, I do serve, I, w I was a child of one of the major houses, but uh, to uphold my oaths and my various beliefs, I won't be telling you that. Nah, understandable. But I do still support members of the uh, my house that come to me. So, yes, if you just mention that, they will approach. Uh, in the okay. meantime, while you're doing that, I'm going to prepare a very quick and dirty teachings, well, beginner's teachings to Azith. That... You're going to cast the spell Point of Power? <laughs> she She's going to give you, like, the kids' illustrated, like, Bible to Azith. <laughs> My first disease by <laughs> It's got a bunch of colorful pictures of spiders feeding on heretics. Oh, God. 
You're doing better than the rest of us put together. So. <laughs> How did I get the spider quiz? What started as a disaster for you ended up quite successful. Yeah. All right. All right. So, I take it Fern leaves the temple. Yes. We will yes. cut over to Graham and Otto. Uh, Graham still presumably has most of the duration of that spell. Yeah, I assume you didn't spend this, this, this is all happening at the same exact time. Yeah. So, you, Graham, your spell has only been like 10 minutes. You still have like a full 50 minutes left. Yeah. So, uh, Graham is going to approach the front gate very conspicuously and uh, make no show of force and stop at a healthy distance and uh, say uh, I need to speak with you gentlemen about an issue and what would that issue be uh, one of our compatriots uh, after we got rebuffed at the gate took it on his own self to uh try to get in there we need him back mm -hmm. you do it realize you're admitting to some form of collusion and conspiracy correct no you are admitting to a form of conspiracy by admitting this i mean if you want to make that argument whatever Well, so I'm just trying to get him back because normally he's pretty good at sneaking around. And we kind of need that in this line of work. Normally pretty good. You're not helping your case. I have gold. Let me go fetch a member of the council hall to speak with you. There we go. Turns and... With him are a good 10 members. So yes, it's a very well-dressed drow man, uh, jewelry. Um, he also has a symbol of the city Mythograph on him. And yes, with him are 10 members of the the uh, the actual like Sharmoth who come with their fine plate armor, their spear shields, accompany him. So... You hear, you've been admitting to one of your members has entered into the hall after you were told not to enter, and apparently has been arrested. He means well. I take it you're the source of the alarm, then? I'm assuming he was. Mm. Well, I can allow you inside to square this all away, but you would need to give up your Weapons and armor to the guards of the gate. All right. Does uh, does Otto want to go in with me, or should I do this part alone? Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Yeah, this sucks. Because <laughs> <laughs> then we we also have to account uh, like account for a uh, porno addict over there. <laughs> Pido comes back next week. Guys, how did the last session go? We're all in fucking jail. And the rabbit is becoming a priestess of spider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty serious turn. Things are taking. This is what happens when you decide to talk while you were out. Kaido comes with you. He's like, "Oh, I'll give him my weapons and armor." <laughs> Don't worry, Graham. Wink. <laughs> wink, wink. I guess Kaido's going with you. Graham just kind of exhales through his nose. But says no, thank you. I guess I'll stay outside in case something ridiculous happens. I mean, you know what? Everything's on the table t today, so. Because I can't really talk to anybody, so I can't help you. You can speak Elvish. Yeah, but he's got the. It's probably easier for. Oh, right. And I should say before this gets awkward, I'm using a spell to understand and be understood. That's fully acceptable. It's going to run out. So if I suddenly get struck dumb, well, I'll let you form your own opinions on that. But if we stop understanding each other, that'll be why. Kyder speaks up. That's okay, Graham. I can speak under common. No. Graham, trust me. No. 
I'm going to take that as a yes, Graham. You he see what inside. I'm working with here. He heads inside. They take you into a back room. Pick up the jumper cables. Sit you down. Okay. So. Slaps a, a piece of paper onto the table. It's in under common, but if you were to run your hand over it, you could uh, identify the words. Okay. So your friend is guilty of quite a few things here. Trespassing. Bearing weapons and armor with the council hall. From deep underground, you hear a cry of, I'm innocent! <laughs> He's guilty of attempting to access restricted records. He's guilty of failure to comply with inquisitorial investigation. And he's guilty of just general crimes against the city of Mithlagroth. Can I add a character that sounded like Dark Heresy uh, accusations right there, like the whole list? That was kind of awesome. It kind of does, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is what the other half of that looks like. So. <laughs> no, expect to be on this side of the Inquisition table. Now, is this a, f when you say a friend, I understand you seem like you're from the surface. The slavery is not popular there. You might not be using the correct terminology. Is he your friend, or is he a slave that you own? He was one, then the other. And uh, right now he's the other, especially when I get through with him. Do you mean he's a slave? Hmm. Is he your property? Do you own him? No, but he owes me... He owes me big, and he can't... He can't say no, so no, he likes nodding while shaking his head to it, like well yes, but no, but yes. You... I'm gonna mark him down as an indentured servant and I'm going to put unregistered indentured servant here as well. I assume there's a fine for that. There's yes. <laughs> yeah. Now I assume this is just general skull duggery. It's about the size of it. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be the first person who's ever waltzed their way into the council hall attempting to access our files here. So I'm not too surprised. So. Where are we going to go with this? Shall I have him jailed? Shall I have him executed? Well, Would you I'd like, like me back. to... He's useful. I'd like him back intact and still of use. And I'm willing to... He's intact back. enough. Mm, that's a... He, he, he looks like he's mulling it over in his chair. <laughs> and he's like, Yeah, no, that's probably the best I could hope for in this situation. And uh, I'm willing to put his skills and ours to use to uh, make whole the city for... His well-intentioned uh, errors, shall we call them. I mean, his skills had him land in a cage. So, for whatever you so, say his skills are, I don't truly abide by them. All the more uh, reason not to worry that much about me trying to get him back, right? Mm-hmm. Why don't you two sit and wait? I'm going to have an Inquisitor come and meet you. And mm. we'll be having a discussion with you. Yay. <laughs> and we will pick this up next week. <laughs> uh.